Well, I suppose the first question that most Australians might ask of someone in your position is, what's it like to live in Saudi Arabia? Yes, uh, we, we often get that question, and um, I, I have a stock answer for that, and I tell people it's like living in Canberra. It's much better than you expect. Um, and uh, it, you even get that question from Saudis, uh, ones who live in Jeddah or Mecca or Medina, and those three countries are less conservative than in Riyadh, and they look at you and go, oh, how do you like living in Riyadh? Um, actually, it's great. Uh, it does get hot, uh, 50 degrees in the summer plus, but uh, you can get out and do exercise. And uh, um, at night, you see all these little families dotted around the desert, around the fire, drinking coffee and having picnics. Uh, so they, they live their life there, but live in air conditioning during the day. But in summary, it's a really good place to be, quite surprising. On the surface, though, it looks like Australia and Saudi Arabia wouldn't necessarily have very much in common. What sort of common interests do we share? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, it's broader than you expect. Uh, the, uh, firstly, Saudi Arabia is in the G20, and of course we are hosting the G20 next year, so uh, we have a common interest in the global economy. Uh, Saudi Arabia was a founding member of the UN security uh, of the UN in, in the 40s, and uh, it hasn't served in the UN Security Council yet. It is going for the UN Security Council this year, so we might be on the council at the same time. Um, we also deal with it through our uh, interest in, uh, from our Muslim population here. Of course, we get three or four thousand pilgrims, Muslim pilgrims, to uh, Mecca and Medina every year who are hosted by, by the Saudi government. And we're also a member of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. As a, we have a representative there. And so in interfaith dialogue and other such issues, we, we have a, a, some similar views and, uh, uh, and, and those views we don't see eye to eye on, we have a conversation about. And so how's the trade then between the two countries? Uh, it's not as good as we would expect, um, but it's uh, pretty, pretty solid. We have, it's, in dollar terms, it's about $2.2 .2 billion. Uh, that's made up of uh, uh, $800 million of uh, Camrys. Camrys made in Australia are very popular in Saudi Arabia. They, uh, they last a long time and uh, the young kids can spin around in them on the roads uh, uh, and that's it's one of the problems that they have a very high death uh, toll unfortunately, not because of the Camrys but because of the uh, abandon with which they, uh, they drive. It's a big problem. But Sa uh, Australia is also playing a role in solving that because uh, uh, an Australian company is providing the speed uh, cameras uh, which are very unpopular at the moment in, in some circles in Saudi Arabia. Um, we also supply uh, wheat and barley so, and uh, uh, sheep and uh, beef, so uh, we seem very much as part of their uh, food security, which is important. Um, we also, the trade, there's uh, 11,000 Saudi scholars studying in Australia, 11,000 plus the 6,000 family dependents. So that brings in a healthy uh, income to the country, but more importantly, it creates thousands of ambassadors for Australia when they come back to Saudi Arabia and uh, they bring back ideas, they bring back links in the business community and they come back as tourists as well. So it's uh, an important link and we also have five or six thousand Australians working in Saudi Arabia in various uh, sectors and uh, helping out in the development of that country and f finance in education and in infrastructure. So there's a lot going on, more than you would expect. So how then is Australia perceived in Saudi Arabia? Yes, it depends who you ask. Um, most Saudis will start off talking about the kangaroos and the, uh, the, the wildlife and uh, the, the dangerous animals that we have. Um, and then um, uh, they then would tend to talk about sheep and the, the meat, as, as Australian sheep is very popular in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they, if you talk a little bit more to them, they would then politely uh, raise the question is, why do we shoot camels? here, because um, we have, as you know, about a, min a million feral camels, and uh, uh, they have seen videos and films of these camels being shot by helicopter, and in the Arab and Saudi culture, the camels are very dear, loving, loyal creatures, and so they uh, get uh, quite uh, saddened when they, when they see these scenes. Um, so we, we explain that, of course, and to say it doesn't happen very much anymore, uh, but they're looking at uh, importing camels to Saudi Arabia from Australia. 
which would be quite a, a coals to Newcastle, as they say, uh, especially young camels because they, they use them for wedding feasts and things. Uh, as uh, it's, uh, The cam young camel is a very popular dish. Uh, it can be quite chewy, but um, it's not too bad. It's very lean. Neil, we've heard so much over the past couple of years about the Arab Spring and the effect that that's having across the Middle East. Is it having much of an impact in Saudi Arabia? It has. Uh, the Saudis have managed the Arab Spring uh, pretty cleverly, I think. 60% um, of the population is under 30. Um, uh, so there's a very young population age. And these young people across the Arab world have started to uh, mobilize and what the Saudi government has learned is they have to listen to their population. So they've gone about it in several ways. Firstly, the king uh, announced, King Abdullah, $130 billion of funding to build 500,000 houses, uh, to give everyone salary increases, uh, to, to uh, do more training and to do more scholarships abroad. These uh, 11,000 students that study in Australia is, are part of 150,000 Saudi scholars who have been sent overseas as part of an educational visionary program, in my view, by, the, by King Abdullah. Uh, so they're listening to their population. At the same time, they're allowing the population, giving it more leeway, especially on, um, on, in the media. So in the media, you have, in the print media, more critical articles um, of the government and of services, uh, surprisingly critical, actually. And then the social media, 23% of Saudis use uh, Facebook. Um, it, they're one of the highest users of Twitter, uh, YouTube, millions of hits every day. And you could, you can only, if you wanted to have a look on something, I'd uh, look at Saudi Gangnam style, and you will see a, a, quite a funny video on Saudis doing Gangnam style. Uh, so it, the, there's a whole range of ways in which the government is sort of lifting the uh, uh, the barrier for criticism, and in that turn, making the government more responsive. So um, some people view. Uh, the Arab Spring is a, a revolt or a revolution from the young. There isn't anger among the young in Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of love for their king. There is frustration, and, but the kingdom is managing to deal with that uh, uh, quite well, I think. Um, they're spending money, but they're also lifting restrictions. So with the, the, that com com combination, I think they're managing to, to um, uh, develop as a country as a result of the Arab Spring and not go through the uh, turmoil that other kingdom, uh, other countries have. Their motto, I think, is evolution, not revolution. Of course, you're not only the ambassador to Saudi Arabia, you also cover Yemen, Bahrain and Oman. What's it like being the ambassador to those four different countries? Uh, firstly, it's, it's great to be able to get a regional perspective. Every time you go to a different country, uh, it, it helps your broader understanding of the regional dynamics. Uh, Bahrain is a small country. Uh, we have long-standing interests there. We have a, uh, a, a, the navy ship. Uh, a navy ship operates out of Bahrain. Uh, there is an uh, ongoing uh, um, political process. Uh, I suppose you could say linked to the Arab Spring um, in Bahrain, which we are we are watching and uh, um, trying to contribute to. In Yemen, uh, it's a country, it's, Yemen has the largest population in the Gulf of Arabs, um, about 23, 24 million. Uh, it's the most heavily armed country in the world, um, uh, lots of light arms around, and they're going through a national dialogue process there. Uh, getting down to Sana'a, uh, uh, the capital of Yemen, is an amazing experience. The old city in Sana'a is, is a world heritage, it's amazing. Uh, the Yemenis are extraordinary people and they've decided to take a path of dialogue rather than of, of uh, conflict in solving their problems. So it's, again, it's a, a, a very interesting times there. And Oman is a real gem. Uh, it's a beautiful country, lots of tourism. Uh, it has a very interesting history. And uh, we also have uh, uh, about 700 Omani students studying in Australia, and that number is increasing. So on every level, we are working more with uh, every of those countries in, in the region. And together, by going through and visiting each one, you get a better understanding of the region, but also of each of those countries. So it's, it's, it's really a, a very enjoyable and, and worthwhile thing. Uh, I I'm, I'm, uh, feel very privileged to be able to be doing it. Neil, you mentioned tourism earlier. Is there anything in particular that Australians should bear in mind if they're planning to visit Saudi Arabia or any of the other countries in the Middle East? Mm. 
That's a good question. Uh, uh, there, is no, um, there are no tourists per se to Saudi Arabia. They don't issue tourist visas. Uh, but there is a lot of religious tourism. And so we do get our Muslim uh, uh, Australians visiting Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have, uh, especially around the time of the Hajj, uh, we have special uh, bulletins on the travel website uh, encouraging them, uh, advising them how they should behave and what things they should be aware of. And that's uh, really would encourage uh, Muslim Australians to read that before they travel. Um, in uh, Yemen, we advise people not to visit Yemen. The kidnapping threat is very high. Um, uh, and in Bahrain, uh, we suggest you reconsider your need to travel. Uh, uh, there are still um, some unrest there. Oman, it, it, there are no problems. It has a very healthy tourist industry and uh, it certainly uh, would be a place that I think uh, and many Australians do go there and have a wonderful time there. Thanks very much, Neil, for speaking to us today. No, thank you. And that was Neil Hawkins, Australia's ambassador to Saudi Arabia as well as Yemen, Oman and Bahrain.